Hey everybody, JJ here. I'm back for another Wednesday of Zoom networking. Uh, boy, Christmas is days away, and we're all shopping and doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, but what's really awesome is we have an, an excellent guest speaker taking time out of his day and his week to be with us. Uh, the young man we have speaking today is out of Pace Morby Sub Two community. And if you've been on the calls before, you've heard me talk about Pace More being sub two. It is the premier real estate education program in the country, bar none. Um, great people in there. And our guest speaker is one of these excellent individuals. He has started as a student. He is helping others. He's an entrepreneur, businessman, family man, father, husband. How's the baby? Good. Our we guest speaker, little- today, my good friend, Mr. Jacob. How, how are you doing, Jacob? I'm good. How are you, JJ? I'm good. I'm going to ask you again. How's how's the baby? Good. He's how old is the baby? Today. Excuse me? Three months old today. Three months old. So uh, running all over the house, I take it. Not quite, but I mean, he is the size of a six-month-old. He's in six months clothes already, and it's crazy. And what's the baby's that. name? Clark. There you go. That's a cool name. Thank you. That's a, I probably have a, I envision Clark Kent, Superman, but uh, so this is your first baby. Second. Second. So we, have a, we have a daughter. She'll be two in February. Fantastic. Fantastic. So um, yep. those that don't know you or about you and people know your name, uh, what part of the country are you from? From Michigan, Grand Rapids on the west side. Okay. Uh, Grand Rapids on the west side. Um, yep. Have you always lived in Michigan? Did you, did you grow up there? Yep. Born and raised. Fantastic. Um, growing up in Michigan, um, were you like an outdoorsy guy? I know there's a lot of stuff going out there. Uh, what are some of the things that you've done through your life, maybe you, your your youth? Because now as a real estate investor, I know for myself and probably most other people, we're so busy we don't have time for some of our hobbies. But growing up in Michigan, what were some of the things you like to do? Growing up, I did a lot of hunting. We would go camping up in the UP of Michigan always going swimming at the lakes and that sort of stuff. So fishing and hiking and all that kind of stuff is the majority of what we did. But every year we'd always make sure that we made it up to the UP to go camping and just kind of get away. The cell signal doesn't work as good up there. So it's kind of a good thing to be able to just get away from everything, recharge, see nature and just relax. That sounds like a lot of fun. I live in Los Angeles and it's the big city for the most part. So we got Griffith Park where I grew up, but to hear about people growing up going camping and fishing and hunting that just sounds like an absolutely awesome uh place for for people for kids to grow up yeah i don't have a lot of time for it these days anymore but we still make time to go camping periodically a week here and there but there you go so now you're a real estate investor yep um what did you do before real estate what do you what, teen years post teen years early 20s uh what was your transition? What did you do before real estate? So I was the traditional, graduated high school, went right to college. I got a dual major done in four years, moved right into IT. I was an IT consultant. I did that for about a decade and then joined Sub2. A week later, I quit my job, moved into real estate full time and haven't ever looked back. So I, I hear in Sub2, as I've been in about a year now, a little bit more than a year, they have certain, certain, there's many different aspects of real estate. There's yep. the acquisitions manager, there's the dispo manager, there's the integrator, the visionary, the transaction coordinator. When you started, I guess you were, for me, when I started SEB2, I wasn't even aware of these titles. And it allowed me to get a better view of the landscape, seeing how that was broken down. Was that the same thing for yourself when you started Sub2? No, I was an integrator right off the bat, just because that's what my IT experience was. So I leveraged what I used to do as an IT consultant and partnered up with somebody who was already in real estate. He was doing about three or four wholesale deals a month. And within like a month and a half, two months, I was able to scale him up to doing three or four a week with half the staff. So we scaled pretty quick just with the right systems and implementing the right processes. You can really take wholesaling far. So now you had said that you were an integrator beforehand. In what capacity or what what industry were you an integrator prior to coming to Sub2 in in your real estate venture? 
So it was any business. So we were in lots of different industries. As an IT consultant, we would come in and look at your systems, look at your processes, working with the CEOs, the CFOs, helping them build out their business process, making sure their onboarding and offboarding was working properly, making sure that they're leveraging technology in order to help reduce human error and be able to make everybody as efficient as possible. So we did a little bit of everything. Um, and through all of that, with all the different industries, I got to see what worked best. We worked with big nonprofits, Fortune 500 companies. We did a lot of private government work. So they all had these different back ends of how they'd structure their business. So I got to see what works best and what doesn't. And then I just funneled all of that into real estate because I always knew I wanted to invest my money in real estate. And when COVID happened, the internal politics of different companies and stuff just got kind of crazy. So that's part of why I wanted to get out of that completely and just go make my money in real estate too. Well, now, for you, now moving into real estate, having been an integrator beforehand, uh, were you just learning to get into real estate and see where that might lead? And then you found out there was a role for an integrators? Or did you know that being an integrator, you wanted to just do that kind of a thing into real estate? I mean, I knew being an integrator, you can structure any business. Once you understand business at a high level, it doesn't really matter what industry it is. So I I knew that real estate was going to be the play just because of how much money you can make in real estate and the good that you can have and the impact that you can make. So I, I knew 100% real estate was where I needed to go. So as you got in, uh, what was your first path? And were you looking to wholesale? You probably weren't looking to rehab. Uh, or were you just looking to, as you say, you just to find someone to implement your your skill that you've already developed with? Right. Yeah. So I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So I found somebody who had already been wholesaling and just helped him scale up his business. Okay. Well, let me ask you, um, how long have you been in step two? It's been a little over a year now. Okay. And what has your journey been like in that time? I mean, I know when I started a little over a year, there was about 1,200 folks. Now there's over 7,000. So what's been your journey as the group's gotten bigger? Uh, has your path become more defined? Have you find you're interacting with more people? Uh, how has your business maybe changed as, as your educational platform has grown bigger? So I initially started out wholesaling and I've kind of pivoted away from that now just because I started to, on the side, help out other investors, right? I knew these systems, I'm a high level integrator. So I was able to help these people scale their businesses and I started to see so many people that were struggling in their business. Like they're working full time, they're getting after it, they're doing all the right things. It's just, there's one aspect that they're missing. So I was starting to come in and help different people figure out what thing that they were missing in order to help them get to that next level that they were looking for. For some people, it was to be able to produce enough income in the real estate business to be able to quit their full-time job. For other people, it was wanting to be able to take a vacation and not have their revenue dip because they're the one that's doing everything in their business. So helping people transition from working in their business to working on their business is a is a big thing that I run into quite a bit. And so I started getting into more of the like coaching consulting side of things like I used to do as an IT consultant, but specifically with wholesaling. And it just started to take off. And now that's what I do full time is just come in and I work with lots of different investors to help them scale up their business. And it's structured specifically to what they need for the goals so, that they're looking to do. As an integrator and helping people build their business, um, this is, is this mainly involved with, with people that have websites or is your talent able to be, I mean, people need a website to implement an integrator. Am I understanding that correctly? Sometimes it just depends on the unique situation. Like there's, Lots of different reasons why you would need a website. It's just, it depends on what you're trying to do. So like if you're trying to get seller leads to come in and you need a website for them to go to, to fill out a form to then have it send to your CRM, then yeah, absolutely. You need a funnel of some sort on a front page for somebody to be able to click on, to go to, to bring you to a website. So then you can type in your name and your email, and all the stuff that you always talk about too, with your Facebook, right? You need to make sure you get all of the information from that person, not just one channel. So as an integrator, someone's helping people with their businesses, uh, what kind of suggestions or advice do you have for the new investor as they're getting going? How, when people don't understand the whole horizon, 
what might you recommend to someone who's getting started as far as how they might utilize a service like yours, being an integrator, being a coach, being a trainer? Uh, how would how would your service roll into a new investor? So everybody's a little different, right. but specifically with like new people, there's one of two ways that everybody learns. You either learn with your time or you learn with your money that you're paying for education for somebody else's time that they've spent to go and learn the thing. So you, you kind of have to make a decision on where you're at financially. Some people, they have the money available to invest in further education and other people, they don't. So they have to take their time. So then they look at free resources on YouTube and different things that people like Pace puts out and Cody Sperber. And like, there's a lot of free information out there. So use that free information first to get started. And once you start getting some revenue in, then you can leverage that to be able to go and actually hire somebody that can build out a custom plan specifically for you for what you need. That helps you know, a lot. Are custom plans purely related to a website or do custom plans have other applications? So it's the whole business structure. So everything from what CRM are you using? How are you having the communications with the different sellers? Like we go, we go into everything. So with the clients that I work with, they're all wholesalers. So what are you using for your marketing? What KPIs are you tracking? What's your onboarding and offboarding process look like? What's your training process look like? Do you have departments built out specifically for each of these? Do you have roles within that? Like all these different minute details that we go into, we make sure that you have the foundation built so that then business just turns into a math equation. A plus B equals C. You do A, you do B, you're going to get C result. It's just the way that it works. It's all based on numbers. You make a certain amount of phone calls, you make a certain amount of offers, you're going to get a certain amount of deals. And with those deals, you're going to close X amount of dollars. And being able to track from the beginning to the end, you'll know, okay, for every dollar I spend on cold call marketing, I get $4 in revenue out on the other end of the funnel. And once you start to have those numbers and know those things in your business, that's when you can really take your business to the next level because you can actively track what's happening real time instead of all of a sudden having your revenue dip and then you got to go back and figure out, all right, what was going on? Was it our leads? Did we have bad data that we got from the skip tracing company that we tried? Were we not following up enough? Did somebody get sick? All those different things that you'll be able to see that real time instead of trying to go back and look at it like, oh, dang it, this just happened. Now what? You get to tell that real time and just plug that hole before it's a problem. So as I said you know, earlier, maybe before we started the call with all the people gathering, I knew your name before I knew you. I heard your name through the Sub2 community. I saw your post. I saw you being visible. Are you finding that you're getting most of your interaction uh, through your engagement on social media? Or are people just sort of calling you uh, by word of mouth? Or is it... Uh, uh, a balance between the two? It's a combination of both. So a lot of it is social media, whether that's Facebook or Instagram. Um, some of it's organic, some of it's paid ads. There's lots of different ways. I mean, with every business, there's lots of different ways that you can bring in new leads. So it's just depending on your specific business and your situation, how much time do you have available? How much money do you have available? And then that helps you kind of choose which strategy you move forward with. Now, some people getting new to the internet, maybe new to Facebook. I've seen a lot of investors are like, well, I just joined step two. So now I got a Facebook page. I'm not, I'm not in the Instagram yet. Do you find Instagram uh, has been a benefit to you as far as the, the growth of what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. I would say Instagram is more so than Facebook these days. Yep. So are you yourself posting or do you have a VA post for you? Or how does that work? Are you implementing a social media VA or do you do all of it yourself? I do all of it myself right now. I'm actually starting to ramp up my social media more than I was in the past. The majority of what I do right now is my Facebook ads. So the majority of it is focused on Instagram. And that's how I'm getting most of the traction through a lot of the, the clients that I have. And then there's also organic stuff and word of mouth. And when I'm talking with people, it just it's usually a good fit. So Ed, do you have any designs on moving into uh YouTube at all. I know a lot of people are going there, putting videos up and things of that nature. Yeah, eventually, especially more on the integration side, as far as like the CRMs and the tools and stuff like that. I'm planning on making some YouTube videos and start pushing some of that stuff out just to make it easier for newer investors to know what things to look for. 
So like breaking down a CRM, I've used probably over 20 different CRMs over the years. So wow. being able to break it down and show like, these are the key pieces that you need to have, like making sure all client communication is all centralized. You want to make sure every phone call, every email, every text message is all recorded for one and two all in the same place. Because when wow. you're trying to use your Gmail in one place, you're using your personal cell phone for some of the calls and some of the texts, but you also have an online dialer. Like when you're all over the place like that, it's really hard to keep track of what was said, who did you say it to, when was the last time you talked with them, what are the next steps? Like not being able to have all that stuff centralized lets a lot of deals fall through the cracks. I'm sure. Wow. And just, just to think that that all can be centralized in one area is amazing. Yeah. Um, and. You can even have social media DMs in there too. There's some CRMs that your Facebook DMs go right in there. Your Instagram DMs go in there. There's one that I have that they just integrated TikTok. So your TikTok, all that stuff gets incorporated too. There's a lot of really wow. cool tools out there. So now for the newer investor who might be watching on YouTube, or maybe there might be somebody right now on the call live with us, it's a newer investor. And they're not familiar with the acronym CRM. What does that mean? for the new investor and how does that apply to a new investor's business as it grows? So a CRM is basically a software tool that allows you to keep track of your sales pipeline. So any communication that you have with a customer, what stage of that process that they're at. So again, we'll stick with wholesaling, right? When somebody comes over as a lead saying, Hey, I want to sell my property then you can keep track of, all right, this person is a brand new lead and this person we're already having conversations with. They're a hot lead, a warm lead, a cold lead. There's lots of different ways that you can break that down. And then, hey, this one's under contract. This one's at title and we're waiting to get it clear to close. This one's already got a buyer assigned to it. There's so many different stages that you can set up throughout the whole sales process. So that way, you know, at any point in time where each lead is and at what point in the funnel they're at. And in order to do that, that's what allows you to know what you need to work on every single day. So if you have a salesperson that's making phone calls, they need to know, hey, I'm supposed to call the new leads. And then I call the hot leads and I follow up with them. Then I call the warm leads and they need to have a process so that they know what to do every single day. And a CRM allows you to have that. And a lot of CRMs, they also have automation that you can then leverage so that you can get more done with less of your time. So using the software to when you move it from one stage to another, it automatically triggers events that allow you to do other things. I've heard a couple of different names for CRM. What, what, what do you what, what's your perception of what CRM stands for? I know I've heard it said a couple of different ways. Customer relations module is usually what a lot okay. of people call it. So it's just it helps you keep track of your your customer relations and all the communication that you do with them and what stage of the funnel they're in. And it just helps you stay organized. If you don't have it, it's a lot harder to know what stage everything's at. So that's obviously computer-based. Yep. Yeah, it's usually just a website that you go to. Um, and that was my next question. So the CRMs are, are, are website-based. Yep, they're all web-based. So it's, as long as you have an internet connection, you can get access to them. Okay. And so you have an internet connection, you've got a website, people can get access to someone's website. And as they engage with the website, they're then their interactions become a part of the management system, which is basically what the CRM is running all that management information. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. And definitely. That. Um, and you 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 made a comment that again, it's one of these words that comes out that I really hadn't heard uh, before. Real estate investment was funnels. Before I became an investor, a funnel was stuff I used to put oil into my car, you know, or something like that. So yep. for those that aren't aware, what is a real what what is a funnel in relation to websites and CRMs? So a funnel is basically a, a technical term that allows you to take in information from people. So say again, we'll use wholesaling as an example. I've got a bunch of sellers that are wanting to sell their house. Well, that comes into the funnel. And what the job of the funnel is, is to help filter those people down to the specific people you can actually help. So with wholesaling, the job is to get a property, get it under contract, and then sell the rights of that contract to somebody else. And you need to filter through those people to find the people who are actually motivated that actually want to sell their property and can sell it to you at a price that you'll be able to then go make money. And that whoever you sell it to is going to be able to have enough to be able to make money on it too. So it's all about solving problems for the sellers. So there's different sellers that are going to have different problems. So what that funnel does is it helps take 
hundreds of people that are willing to sell their property and funnel it down to five or 10 that you can actually help. There you go. Yeah. Cause you don't want to spend all your time on the, on, on the wrong individuals that aren't maybe serious investors or something, serious, serious sellers. Right. Um, as you've moved along and you've really grown this past couple of years here, the development of your business, where do you see your business going as an integrator with what you're, you're doing with, I guess you're, you have your own company now, right? Yep. So your company provides these innovation services. What do you see for yourself in the next, say, two to three years? Or have you thought that far ahead? Or how, yeah, are, you maybe plan, how are you planning your growth? Or what, what do you foresee for your, your future? Yeah, just continuing to build out the coaching, continuing to add value. So initially, I'm starting with wholesaling, but I'll probably end up pivoting more towards other industries and other different ways that I can still take that same integration knowledge and how to scale the business and help pull in different, like working with plumbers and working with contractors and like other things that are still related to real estate, but being able to help them scale their businesses. So say I'm working with somebody that has a fix and flip company. Well, I can help them scale their fix and flip. Absolutely. But then being able to work with their contractors to help their contractors be able to scale their businesses so that you can continue to have good teams that you help that team scale. So then that only helps your business even more. So there's there's lots of different avenues that we can go down with that side of it. But initially it's starting with wholesaling to make sure to to help as many wholesalers as I can, which there's a lot of wholesalers out there. So you've been talking about wholesalers. Yep. Are you doing much with rehabbers or how does, does that apply as well? Or you just got so many wholesalers that you've not gone to the rehab aspect yet? I mean, I do both. There's a lot of people that, they do multiple things, right? So it's very rare that you find a real estate investor that's only doing one thing, whether that's only doing fix and flip or only doing wholesaling or only doing buy and hold or only doing Airbnb arbitrage. Like there's so many different strategies you can do. A lot of times, the most common thing is people are doing too many of those. Where I run into that a lot, where they're doing fix and flip, they're doing buy and hold. They get that shiny object syndrome because there's lots of ways you can make money in real estate and they're doing all of it but they're doing all of it at a surface level because they're trying to do too many things all at once. So as you're you're coaching people, are you coaching in the business capacity as well as maybe suggesting they don't do too many things at one time? Yep. In addition to integration or or just just integration you're coaching or? Well, and that's part of integration, right? Is that the integrator is the type of person that helps. Like I like to use the kite analogy. The visionary is the actual kite that's up in the air. And without the integrator, which is the string holding them to the ground and keeping them grounded, the visionary is just going to fly away and keep doing a whole bunch of things all the time. So, and the integrator by himself would just be a string laying on the ground, not able to go anywhere. So you need both of them to be able to create that tension. So part of the integration services, like you're talking about is helping those visionaries who have all these amazing goals and aspects and different ideas of what they're wanting to do, helping ground them a little bit and helping bring them back down a little bit to focus on the things that they need to first so that then they can get that established and then go do that next project. I think that's awesome. As you've gone into real estate now and you've become this integrator and you're helping people with their businesses, I guess you probably learned a lot of things about real estate you didn't know walking in. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Every day I'm always learning more. That's one of the cool things about being a coach or a teacher or anything like that. Usually, you end up learning just as much as you're, you're teaching. So what are some of the things that you've come to learn that you really enjoy? That have been like, hey, this is pretty cool. I didn't know about this or anything that really kind of resonates with you and what you're doing? The, the creative aspect of it is always super cool. So like there's a million different ways that you can structure a deal. So it's super cool to start seeing new ways that people are using things creatively. So like everybody knows marketing, like, hey, you're doing cold calling. Well, There's unique ways that you can cold call in different markets that you can target that are going to do different things. So yes, you're still within wholesaling, but there's so many different ways that you can kind of piece together that puzzle. It's super cool to always learn new aspects. And like, there's lots of people that are doing TV ads now, whereas they didn't used to do a bunch of TV ads, but they're getting a lot of good results from it. And there's other people that are getting billboards and they're doing all kinds of different things in their business that isn't the traditional cold calling, driving for dollars, direct mail all those typical things, door knocking that you see a lot of people talking about. And there's creative ways that you can incorporate those together too. 
So it's just super cool to see other people's creativity. And again, it goes back to that visionary aspect, right? So a lot of these people I'm working with are the visionaries that have all these great ideas of new ways that they can try and do things that I wouldn't have necessarily thought of. But where I come in is, all right, you've got this great idea. How can we make that work? And then how can we make that work in your current situation? Now, with your business, uh, are you a, a solo entrepreneur? Is this a family thing? Is your wife involved? Uh, do you have people that are working for you, providing other other types of roles as you're stirring the ship? How, how are you running your business these days? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm the one that does all the actual coaching calls, but on the back end, as far as like appointment setting and DMs and all that kind of stuff, I've got some AI integration, some automations built in with the CRM, and I've got a couple of VAs that are doing some of that back end stuff for me, some of the administrative tasks. And that's one of the things that I help people with too, is offloading the tasks that you don't need to do that you can hire out and pay somebody three or $4 an hour to do it for you. And then you can focus on the money-making activities that truly matter and are going to move the needle the most. Now, is there any way that you suggest people go about outsourcing for VAs? And I guess that's what you're talking about, virtual assistants. Yep. Yeah. So there's, there's lots of different ways to actually hire virtual assistants. And again, I don't like to just give a cookie cutter answer because for some people, it's better for them to go through an agency, for example, which is going to cost a little bit more, but for their specific situation, that makes more sense. And for other people, it makes more sense to hire direct. You got to do the training, you got to do the management yourself, and it'll be cheaper per hour to hire a VA direct. So there's advantages and disadvantages to doing those different ways. And it just depends on the specific situation and what the tasks of that person are going to be. If it's something as simple as cold calling, then going through an agency is going to be easier because there's not a whole lot of training you have to do for a cold caller. You give them a script, you do some basic sales training, and they're going to be able to generate leads. But if you're doing something like the acquisitions process, well, now you're trying to train a higher level sales engineer, and that's going to be a little bit harder to find a VA from the Philippines and to train them up with an agency, for example. There's not very many agencies out there that do enough training to be able to give you somebody and just hand them to you and they can close deals right away. There's not very many out there that can do that. So, yeah, of course not. Of course not. Wow, it sounds like a lot. Um, as people are starting new into real estate, do you have any particular suggestions or tips that you would give the new investor as far as getting going? Uh, when they might be ready for an integrator? Is it something they might want to use, trying to get involved with right off the bat? Or do you, do you have any suggestions or tips as a coach? For the yeah, new if you can. On, on, If you can swing it where you can get somebody that's an integrator or somebody that already has a proven system, I mean, it's it's like what Cody Sperber says all the time too, rip off and repeat. Take what's already working and implement it into your own business. The sooner you can do that, the better. Like if you're starting to build a business from scratch, find somebody that already is successful and is doing it the way that you want to do it and copy what they're doing. And sometimes that means hiring somebody and paying them to have them show you the exact tools and exactly what they're doing. And other times it's working for somebody to then learn what they're doing and how they're doing it to then be able to go and implement it yourself. You just want to make sure regardless of what you're doing, you're upfront about your intentions and you're always leading with value. So hiring a coach, your value is you're coming in and you're going to actually implement the things that they're trying to teach you. Because that's one struggle that us as coaches have as we spend a lot of time with people and if they don't actually do the things that we're trying to teach them, then it feels like a waste of time. And we should have spent that time working with somebody who's actually going to implement these things and make the changes. Great. Now, if people wanted to connect with you uh, for coaching or anything of that nature, what's the best way to reach you? Would it be through Instagram, Facebook? Do you have a website? Yep. Instagram is the easiest way. Just DM me on Instagram. It'll be the easiest. It's just Jacob Pew underscore. So first name, last name underscore. Okay. And uh, Anna Leah, you're on with Jacob Pew. Uh, what do you got for him? So um, just wanted to put it out there that I actually work for my W2. I've worked in operations for a long time. I've also worked in HR, doing onboarding, offboarding training, all those things. So if anybody wants information on that, happy to give them. It's all free. Um, But I've been uh, working in that line for a long time, and it's uh, something that needs to be done properly in order for you to scale. And it's one of my biggest problems because I'm kind of like a, I live the visionary life, but I work in (laughs) the integrator side. (laughs) Um, So for me, it's like with my W2 right now, 
I don't have the time to do the work for the integrator part portion, but I don't make enough to hire somebody out yet. So I'm kind of like in that limbo period. Um, and so if anybody wants additional help with that, I'm happy to. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So here's uh here is Jacob's Instagram. Got a picture of him and the family. And uh I'm kind of curious about this stuff, but here you are at Clever Summit, which is where we both were, and of course, Boston. And so the best way to reach you would be to send you a message via your Instagram. Is that correct? Yep. Cool. You know, my group's a networking group, and uh, it's about interaction, and everything you talk about is about, you know, gathering information and building one's business. But with that, um, from your experience as an integrator and someone that, that, that's coaching people to build their businesses, what's the importance of networking and, you know, maybe joining a group like my networking group or just networking in general, what's the importance of networking and, and joining a group with others to help one towards the success of their business? Well, there's a lot of different reasons. Um, there's, there's an old saying that your, your network is your net worth and it's there for a reason, right? So some of those reasons are, when you're surrounded with like-minded individuals that are trying to grow and trying to better themselves, it helps push you. So just like the saying, if you look at your friends, you'll find who you are. Like you're, you're the, the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. So if you're constantly out there with people who are trying to level themselves up, trying to get better, trying to be better human beings, the chances of you becoming a better human being are so much higher. Whereas if you're constantly hanging around people who are toxic who are always dragging themselves down, you're, you're going to start to drag yourself down because it's just what happens. It's human nature. So networking with the right people allows you to help push yourself and better yourself more. It also allows you to have new, unique opportunities to have conversations with people to learn something new that you didn't know about. And if you aren't in those groups with those same types of people, like you talk about with sub two all the time, everybody in sub two is there to try and learn and to grow. And because of that, there's a lot of people that are giving out free information to try and help you learn and grow. Everybody's at different stages. There's always somebody that's in front of you that's doing better than you. And there's always somebody that's below you that's doing worse than you. So there's always somebody you can help. And there's always somebody you can look to for help and for advice. And as long as you're doing that, you're going to continue to keep moving up and up and up. Excellent. Excellent point. So uh, for those of you that are watching uh, Jacob's presentation now on YouTube, I'm going to ask, you know, please please like the presentation. Hit the little like button down below. And please feel free to put some comments in. Uh, what you thought of the presentation and just your comments uh, would be much appreciated. And, um, you know, please feel free to keep following us on Flip Setup with JJ. We've got more great speakers coming up in the future. And, uh, again, to, to connect with Jacob, you want to get with him on Instagram. And that would be his name, Jacob Pew underscore at Instagram. And um, you can find me on Facebook as well as on my website of jjazizen.com. And, uh, you know, come network with us and, you know, build your relationships and build your business. If you guys are on the call now, hang on, don't go away. We're going to go to breakout rooms and live networking. And uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for joining us and, Please stay tuned and look for us for more, more guest speakers, more content. Back for Jacob and myself. Uh, thanks a lot. We'll see you guys soon. Over yeah. and out. <laughs>